OK, so welcome to this screencast, which is about the hydrocarbons. Um, and we're going to be looking at three different homologous series, which are all hydrocarbons today. And hopefully, by the time you've finished watching it and summarising it, you'll have a good idea of what we mean by what a hydrocarbon is, what the names of the three main groups of hydrocarbons are that we need to know about in year 11, how we can write a general formula for each of those groups. We need to know also what we mean by a homologous series and what the difference between a saturated and an unsaturated compound is. And also, as we move through this presentation, you'll see that the molecules are drawn in lots of different ways. But really, today is not about mastering all those different ways, it's just about showing you a few of those different ways. Okay? So here we go. First of all, what do we mean by homologous series? Well, this is really quite an important definition to learn. So a homologous series is basically a family of compounds that all have similar features. So it's a group of compounds. All those compounds in the homologous series have to have the same general formula. And one member of the group will differ from another member of the group, in fact, the next member in turn, by a CH2 group. And we'll see what that means in just a moment. OK, so the first homologous series that we're going to look at, I suppose, is the simplest of all the homologous series. And we're looking at the alkanes here. And these are what are termed saturated compounds. And we'll see in a moment exactly what that means. But hopefully you can see here that one member of this group differs from the next one, like we said, by CH2. So this is CH4. If you add CH2 to that, you get C2H6. And if you add CH2 to that, you get C3H8. OK, so we'll look at that a bit more over the next few slides. OK, so here is a great big picture of an alkane. It's actually called propane. And the feature that all alkanes have in common is the fact that they only have single bonds in them. Carbon's an atom that can form four bonds. So if we look at this carbon atom, there's four bonds that it's made. But all of those bonds are single bonds. So if ever you get a compound that's only made of carbon and hydrogen and only has single bonds in it, then it's going to belong to the alkanes homologous series. And all the members of this family or this group of compounds have to share a general formula. And the general formula for alkanes, we can see it here. It's CnH2n plus 2. And what that means is if you've got a whole number of carbon atoms, the number of hydrogens that you have will be told or given to you by the formula 2n plus 2. So if you've got one carbon atom, you will have 2 times 1 plus 2. That's 4 hydrogen atoms. And there we are. There's the molecule called methane with one carbon, black atom, and four hydrogens around it. If you have two carbon atoms, you're going to have the formula C2, and two times two plus two is six. So the next member of this homologous series, which as we can see is CH2 bigger than that one, it's got the formula C2, H6, and there's a slightly different way of representing the molecule. So rather than having this kind of 3D image, we draw all the atoms flat on the page with their single bonds. So now if we've got three carbon atoms, we're going to have C3, and 2 times 3 and 2, I hope this isn't getting too tricky for anyone, is 8. OK, so C3H8, and this is actually a picture of C3H8 using a system called a skeletal formula, which you don't need to know too much about at the moment. But this assumes that any bonds we can't see are filled with hydrogens and that the ends of the lines are carbon atoms. But like I say, we won't worry about them too much for the moment. So the general formula of alkanes is if you've got 
n carbon atoms, the number of hydrogens that you have will be twice that number, plus 2. OK. So now we'll move on to the next homologous series. This one's called the alkenes. So a very similar name to alkanes, but important in one very important way. Uh, sorry, different in one very important way. Um, and these are what are called unsaturated compounds. Now, alkanes were called saturated because we couldn't put any more atoms into the molecules because all the bonds were taken up. But with an alkene, because you've got to have at least one double bond in the molecule, so that's what makes a molecule a member of the alkene series. It's just got carbons and hydrogens, and it's got at least one double bond, like both of these two molecules have. OK. Um, because of that, if we were to open up that double bond, we could put other atoms into the molecule. We'd have spare bonds on the carbon. So that's why they're called unsaturated. We can put more atoms in there, so to speak. So at least one double bond is the key idea there for alkenes and something here about isomers you can actually see that these two molecules have different structures but we'll look at isomers in a future screen cut okay let's just quickly look at the general formula of alkenes well by making the double bond you've so there's a double bond in our molecule you've automatically used up a bond from each carbon atom. So you've got room for two less or two fewer atoms. So the formula here is like the alkene, alkanes formula, but it doesn't have the plus two. So if we've got one carbon atom, we're going to have C1H2, or at least that's what we'd expect. But just need to remember that I've got to get rid of that. Um, just need to remember that if you're going to have a double bond between two carbon atoms, you can't only have one carbon atom. So there isn't an alkene with only one carbon atom. If you've got two carbon atoms, this is even simpler than before. C2 and 2 times 2 is 4. And this is actually a picture of that molecule. It's got two carbon atoms. Four hydrogen atoms, that's actually called ethene, but we'll look at naming these things later. We've got three carbon atoms, C3, two times three is six, and there's a molecule with three carbon atoms, a double bond because it's an alkene, and one, two, three, four, five, six hydrogens. Notice that every carbon has made four bonds, so this one's got two in the double bond and two there, and this one's got two in the double bond and two. So once again, if you've got a whole number, let's just try using the pen again, if you've got a whole number of carbons, the number of hydrogens will be given by twice that number. Okay. This is the last homologous series that we're going to look at in this screencast, and it's all about benzene and its derivatives. The name for this homologous series is aromatic compounds. It's a little bit different to the homologous series that we've looked at so far. You could, I suppose you could say that it's not really a homologous series, but um, the reason why it could be classed as a homologous series is because all the molecules in the aromatic group of compounds have this six membered ring of carbons, or at least all the molecules that we'll look at have. You can actually have smaller or bigger rings than that, but we'll just keep it simple and we'll talk about six. But the important thing is that we've got these alternating double bonds in the rings, okay? And there's lots of different ways of representing this, but one way you can see here is to actually draw the bonds in. So there's those three bond double bonds alternating in the ring. And if you ever see this circle here, that's exactly the same thing as writing three double bonds. This model here doesn't actually show the double bonds, but they must be there if you count up the atoms. But um, we'll not worry about that too much just for the moment. 
Now, it's difficult to write a general formula for these things. So when we're talking about, well, okay, how are you going to talk about the aromatic compounds homologous series in a test or in an exam, don't need to worry about a general formula. You, all you really need to know is that they've got that six-membered ring with the alternating double bonds. Okay, so here's just got a collection of aromatic compounds. Here's benzene, here's methyl benzene, here's dimethyl benzene, and here's propyl benzene, and this is actually a molecule called naphthalene, which has got two of these six-membered rings with the alternating double bonds in it. And we could show it, but what you'd see is that there's no general formula. What formula depends on is actually what's attached to the ring rather than the size of the ring itself, you could say. But like I say, no need to worry about a general formula. Just remember that the aromatic compounds have that ring of six carbons with the alternating double bonds. Okay, and that's it for hydrocarbons.